From the ancient ceremonies to the battlefield, the tabi is the iconic footwear of Japanese culture. Today's video is brought to you by Grown All Natural Soaps. GrownLiving.com the tabby literally translates to foot bag. Japanese tabby are usually understood today to be a split-toed sock. Tabby were originally a kind of leather shoe made from a single animal hide. As Japanese footwear evolved, tabby also changed, with the split-toe design emerging towards the late Heian period to allow the wearer to accommodate the thong of the Waraji straw sandal, serving as a reinforcement to the sole. Outdoor versions of the tabby involve some kind of reinforcement, with soles traditionally made of cloth, leather, or straw. One distinctive style of the tabby are the jika tabby. Jika tabby, which literally translates to a tabby that touches the ground, is also known as tabby boots. They are similar to tabby socks in both appearance and construction, though they can be worn with traditional thong footwear, such as the Geta and the Zori. Chika tabby are mostly designed and made to be worn alone as outdoor footwear. While the traditional tabby usage spans back to approximately the 15th century, the rubber sole Jika tabby is fairly recent. While brothers Tokujiro Ishibashi and Shojiro Ishibashi, founders of the tire company Bridgestone, are credited with the invention of these rubber sole Jika tabby around 1922. It was actually the Maruga company, of which was established in 1919, that began production on these tabby shoes, that merged the ancient tabby design with the new introduction of rubber into Japanese manufacturing. Early models of the Jika tabby date just prior to World War II, but the style was not introduced to the US until Shigeki Tanaka won the 1951 Boston Marathon in a pair of split-toed tabby sneakers produced by Anitsuka, a Japanese footwear company today known as ASICS. Many Japanese companies sought to capitalize on Tanaka's win by producing more tabby models. In terms of appearance, the Jika tabby are traditionally made from 100% cotton and have a sewn rubber sole. The stitching on the upper often varies depending on the intended usage. The tabby cover of the foot does not stretch like a regular sock. It is made from natural fibers. Tabby wick away sweat and maintain your skin's natural natural moisture while preventing foot odor. Now, how are they worn? Well, tabby were originally fastened using a string. However, with advancements in metalworking, nickel-plated brass kohase became the standard. That are these tabs on the rear. The kohase are metal clasps for fastening the back closure of the tabby, which extends from the heel to the ankle. By adjusting the position of the kakeito, which are these hooks, the fit can be loosened or tightened using threaded holes at three levels of fit. The kohase amount is determined by the height of the shoe. The height of the shoe can be as low as five clips, seven as you see here, 10, and all the way up to 15 clips, being a close to knee height boot. In present designs, there are Velcro fastened Jika Tabby, zipper Jika Tabby, and even laced Jika Tabby iterations. Now, what is the usage like? Well, the West mostly associates the Jika Tabby exclusively with a martial arts and ninjutsu lore. Its usage within Japan is far more expansive, known as footwear commonly used by construction workers, farmers, gardeners, and all sorts of laborers. Due to the tough material and their heavy duty but flexible rubber soles, they've also been worn on the battlefield by Japanese soldiers during World War II. Now in present day Japan, they are typically worn for manual labor and exercise. Jika tabi are also worn for comfort as a casual shoe. Although conventional steel toe boots have widespread use in the construction trade, there are many that still prefer wearing the Jika tabby in the workplace due to the flexibility of the soles, allowing the wearer a greater degree 
of grip than rigid soled shoes will allow. Many iterations of Giga Tabby have been developed for specific tasks, such as knee-high Giga Tabby made entirely of rubber used by workers in rice fields and other wet and muddy environments. It also remains a part of traditional festivals called the Mitsuri Tabi, some of which are made with a stronger, more durable design. Outside of Japan, the Tabi and the split toe design have been adopted by large brands. Brands such as Nike, who had released a Nike Air Rift in 1996. Now, Nike claims that the design was inspired by Kenya's Rift Valley with input from long distance runners in Kenya. But it is clear that the Tabby is the true inspiration for their split toe design. Funny enough, Nike also states that the Air Rift represents Nike's first venture into the world of natural motion footwear which alludes to Nike's own understanding of the shoes that they produce, that they are mostly style and fashion driven with functionality a distant concern. Recognized as a first for Nike footwear, the Air Rift's split toe design helped create articulation between a runner's first and second toe. This articulation helped to encourage a more natural motion with every stride. Along with Nike, fashion brands such as Masson, Margiela, Martin Margiela introduced his take on the Tabby in his debut 1988 collection. The Tabby boot is the Belgian designer's interpretation of the split toe Japanese Tabby sock, but with an elevated heel and with prices also being elevated up into the $1,200 range. The Tabby split toe design allows for enhanced mobility and lateral gripping of the toes. Internal research done by the Maruga Tappy Company of Japan demonstrated that they saw a 30% increase in the measured toe strength within a month of wearing minimalist tabby shoes. Dr. Jun Kaneko at Chukyo University also provides research on the effectiveness of the tabby in preventing hallux valgus, known as bunions, in children at elementary school where they are worn as indoor shoes. He presented this report in Italy of September 2019. Now, the structure of the Jikatabi prevents them from falling off and helps raise your awareness of your toes. You'll naturally use your toes more in contrast to indoor shoes like slippers. Tabby are zero drop heel. That means they're flat from the toe to the heel. The forefoot part is wider and they have a thin sole with no cushioning materials. Hence, Tabby not only help relieve knee or lower back pain, but they can also increase your awareness of your toes. I would encourage you to use them more consciously because the link between your brain and your toes is reinforced by wearing shoes like a Tabby. Also, there is a particular understanding when you look at the foot. You see the big toe called the first ray. <laughs> この人差し指からこういうまで and that point between the first and the second, similar to how the thumb opposes the first finger, the first ray opposes the second toe. So the same gripping action that we have, this pincer ability, will also be used by your feet.
なのでまずこの旅はそういう力があります外反母趾の方に押す greater usage of this pincer movement will also create a better mind muscle connection and build the muscles within your feet え見えるかなこの1枚目の足裏の筋肉を引っ張らすとここにクロスしてるんですよこうこうねちょっと見にくいかもしれませんけどこの筋肉は足の裏から内くるぶしを通ってずっと上こう頸骨筋というのの腱なんですねこれここの足裏のこの腱筋肉のつけるねこれがふくらはぎまでつながってるんですよ皆さんねそしてもう一本ありますこれこれわかるこれこのもう一本これビョンビョンビョンこれこれも親指の付け根から人差し指中指の付け根についていてこれは逆のクロスいってこの外くるぶしのここを通ってこれも後ろまで行くこれは飛骨これ外くるぶしあるじゃないですか外くるぶしの外側からこれねさっきのこれがつながっていてその上に上がって飛骨筋の腱なんですねこれほらこれねこれこれ指で分けるんですこれわかりますそのそうすると一番足裏にあるインナーマッスルを使うので If you find wearing five finger vibrams to be odd, definitely suggest that you should try a pair of tabbies for your foot health. This has been Cronin Healthy, the channel where we explore self improvement through movement.